let me unmute first. That would help. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get this ball rolling. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the uh, JS Core Dev Team Weekly Sync. It is January the 21st. Uh, if you are here, please put your name on the attendees list in the uh, crypt pad, which Jacob has put on the chat. Uh, that would be super rad. The note taker today is Jacob. Thank you, Jacob. Um, and yeah, welcome everybody. It's nice to see your faces again. How are we all today? Thumbs up. We are thumbs up. Fantastic. <laughs> all right. Uh, cool. I think I'm recording, so that's good. Um, all right. We'll do what we normally do, um, if that's okay with you all. Uh, and that is to do a round of uh, what I've done last week, what I'm blocked on, and what I'm planning to do this week. Uh, so, hello. This is Matteo. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Hi. Cool. We're just about to start the weekly updates. Hey. Okay. Hey. Got at the start. I'm the other not the Zoom account. So anyway, sorry. Okay. Cool. All right. Weekly updates. Uh, I will start from the top, and I am at the top. Uh, so I'll quickly go through what I've done last week. Uh, ooh, okay. So there was an issue with Big Number JS that we were including Big JS as well as Big Number JS in the bundle. Uh, because some of the new uh, bundle size PRs have been merged, but others haven't. So uh, I fixed an issue with that for the 034 release. Um, I have been, yeah, so, uh, okay, so pre last week we talked to Aaron about the preload servers and uh, what we could possibly do to, um, uh, to uh, mitigate against people um, like abusing them and one of the things that might be happening is that people who are using IPFS might be using it in their CI environment and adding just junk data that we don't want on the preload nodes. Um, so I opened a PR which will actually disable it in um, in CI environments. So as much as I don't like adding code to run uh, th that is test specific, um, it will allow us to stop the preload nodes from getting spammed by people's CI environments. Um, so yeah, eventually this will all go away when we remove the preload nodes, but um, it will be here for a while. Um, the, there was an, ex uh, yeah, there was a, HLJS IPFS loader needed fixing. I fixed that up. Um, and a whole bunch of examples for the new 034 release got broken, uh, which needed fixing. So I sent many PRs for them. Um, and, then, and then after I'd done all of that, I could actually release 0 0.34 and that went out the, out the door this week. So it's out there. Uh, there's a patch release that happened today. Uh, two patch releases that happened today, actually. Um, so hooray for that. Um, Cool. And then uh, I spent a little bit of time um, looking into uh, lazy loading IPLD formats um, from IPFS, which would be which would be super cool, um, because I noticed that um, so some of the work that Hugo's doing is making bundle size uh, really small in browsers and in a PR he's got open, he actually removes the the non default IPLD formats, the exotic ones, which um, which would make the um, the uh, browser bundle really small, but it would mean that you can't resolve stuff like Ethereum data or Git data or stuff like that. So um, I was just musing on a solution to that and actually loading those IPLD formats lazily as and when they're needed from IPFS uh, seemed like a fun idea. So um, I think it was David who, who suggested it in the first place. But yeah, if you're interested in that, then have a look at the YouTube video where I explain a bit more about it. Uh, and so as part of that work, I found out that IPLD Ethereum and IPLD Git um, didn't have their, well, they had browser builds were being built and stuff, but um, the actual dist folder with the browser build in it was being ignored uh, for, for when it was being published. So all I needed to do is add an NPM ignore without that folder. So um, that was super easy to fix. Um, and then I, I guess, okay, so the fun things that um, that might affect you guys uh, day to day is that the elusive database is not open error that happens on Windows sometimes and is really annoying. Um, I looked into it and found out why it happens and sent a pull request and that's uh, been reviewed, merged and is released. It's all good. So that's gone. Um, and I also added a feature uh, called where you can just pipe stuff 
from into JS IPFS add, so you don't have to provide a, a file name anymore, which has been in Go for, I guess, forever. And I'm completely like super surprised that it, it doesn't exist in, in JS IPFS yet. I don't, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, it's there now, so that's fun. I'm not blocked on anything currently. My, for next week, I'm planning on doing a, uh, well, fix, uh, finalizing the timeline for the JS IPFS uh, roadmap and all the PRs. Need, still need to look into that. I didn't get a chance last week because I was on the 034 release train and then I got excited about the lazy loading IPLD formats. Uh, next, what else? Uh, so yeah, I need to, again, also uh, get up to speed with the IPFS. FS benchmarks repo and I would like to write a benchmark this week. So um, yeah, I'm going to hopefully do that. And then if I have time, I will, I will maybe start the CID V1 base 32 by default work. That is me. I'm sorry. That was a long update. Uh, does anyone have any quick questions? Looking blank. I like it. <laughs> it's my favorite look. Uh, Cool, okay, uh, let's move on. Jacob, would you like to give us your update? Yeah, so last week we were at uh, libpdp team week, so we didn't ship a whole lot, um, but we did finalize a draft of the rendezvous spec, um, got that merged. We also created a base roadmap for delivering the rendezvous services and decommissioning um, the star servers. So I'll be finalizing um, uh, a more detailed version of that this week so that we can start collaborating with everybody that will be involved in that like infra um, to get all of that completed uh, hopefully in the next two quarters so targeting tentatively targeting to shut down the star servers july 1st as an arbitrary date so we're going to try to track to that we'll see what happens um, this week going to create an awesome endeavor for the release for rendezvous and git so we can all track that more easily um, there is a JS heap issue that we ran into uh, when doing uh, file exchanges in the interrupt tests. Um, looking at that, also noticed that in those tests exchanging, Go catting from JS is the slowest combination of catting. Uh, like JS to JS is faster, Go to Go is faster, JS pulling from Go is faster, and then oddly enough, uh, Go pulling from JS is significantly faster. Uh, slower and we were seeing heap issues there. So I'm going to try to figure out what is going on there um, We'll also be working on finalizing uh, the PR for the libp2p daemon um, There's initial work there and then you're going to work on a plan of action for getting the multi-address listening um, And configuration for switch sorted out this week so we can get that merged soon Anybody have any questions? Yeah, can you please open up an issue related to cutting from JS to go go to JS? I don't remember which one, which one you perceive is low. So we add that to our um, to our suite because I think uh, Ron is going to work on that stuff later on uh, uh, this week, especially on the JS to go or go to JS, whatever benchmarks, so that we prioritize that case. Um, the reason is, I think uh, I, I would love to take a look with our tools and stuff so that they can, I can see what is the kind of issue. Uh, because those type of seeing the heap spike seems a very like bad from a node point of view. So it's something that should not really happen. And I've not seen it happen in other cases, so it's possible that there is something that needs to be tweaked. Yeah, I'll create the issue there and link to the CI failures that we were having with that. Uh, the create plan for completing need to work for multi-address listening, is that the, uh, the thing we were talking about earlier this week, uh, which would be a replacement f for the uh, web, uh, lib what is it? the thing that Matthew was working on, the multi, yeah, multi -star. Web CP, is that the, the solution for that, but in lib P2P? Yeah, because right now there's no, we can't set any tolerance level for listening. Uh, so like when we're listening on any of the like WebSocket Star or Rendezvous servers, if we want to listen to like six addresses, we can't really do that. We have to listen to one by one. And anytime any one of those fails, um, we throw a fit and crash. Um, ultimately, what we want to be able to do is configure per transport, like what our level of tolerance is. So maybe TCP, we're... 
uh, a little, want to be a little more volatile. Like if we can't make a TCP connection, we just want to throw our SOP so we can figure out what's going on. Um, but stuff like WebSocket star, we probably want to be able to do um, retry with like back off because we have issues with the start service. So being able to configure all of that. So kind of detail out what I'll do is in the pr proposal, detail more out exactly uh, what's aimed to be changed and then fire that off uh, for feedback. Super rad. Cool, thank you. Any other questions for Jacob? Okay, let's move on. It's VMX, it's the Volker. Would you like to give us your update? Yes, so I'm still working on the IPLD API stuff. So the good news is that the tests, so I currently only have like 12 tests that not pass on JS IPFS. And it's really that the, basically the tests are not changed. So the API stays the same on the IPFS side. Still seeing some HTTP issues with MFS, but that's yeah, super hard to debug and it's super weird, but I will figure it out, figure it out hopefully. Um, I'm not yet blocked, but I might get blocked because I use the multi-codec uh, constants thing and I still like to get an um, approval from Ellen and Alex if possible or yeah, further discussions. And yeah, I want really want to finish this API thing and then um, yeah, so I hopefully finish it this week. Yes, that's all I have. Okay, cool. Any questions for Volker? No, okay. Um, Hugo is not here. I will leave his uh, update for you to read at your leisure. Uh, so Zane is also not here. He has also left an update. Thank you both. Uh, and then we have Vashko. Hey all. Uh, so last week as Jacob, I was in the Libby to Bit team week. We mainly aimed for planning for 2019 and also uh, protocols discussion. And uh, also in the Act Day, I made a small search regarding local transports and the web, web Bluetooth in order to have uh, an idea of how it is in order to understand if we'll be able to do it in the near future or not. Uh, from the, our research, it uh, will be may, maybe complicated to do that in uh, this quarter, but uh, I will uh, look at it deeper uh, in uh, next weeks. So uh, besides that, today I rebased the DHTPR with the newest GSFFS release. And uh, uh, I'm uh, currently blocked in some of the DHT tests uh, because of the, um, the issue 10827. There is basically the one regarding the URL uh, modifications in the bundle size. I think uh, Hugo will tackle this as soon as possible. So hopefully I can continue it. Uh, so this week I would really want to get the DHTPR ready for emerged. Uh, also write the PubSub benchmark test. I also will have a meeting with Jacob with the chain safe guys in the, con in the context of collaborating for the gossip sub implementation in JavaScript, which they already started implementing. And uh, also get the demand client of initial implementation PR merged and uh, hopefully leap it to be dropped as well. Everyone has any questions for me? Nice, thank you, Rashko. Uh, so I was just looking through Hugo's and his, in his next column, he's got um, the issue that you linked to there in your blocked thing. So hopefully he will, he'll get to that pretty soon. Also, I think we're wearing the same shirt. And that's sort of rad. All right, um, cool. Next up is, uh, is Alex. Hello. Um, so I yeah. So we did the kickoff the uh, package managers uh, project, which is really cool. Trying to get um, you know all the package managers in the world to start using IPFS to deliver their stuff. Um, so this is going to be really cool. Uh, going to try and track down a bunch of people at Fosdem and and see how we can help them do that. Um, so as part of that, I've been trying to add IPFS support to NPM itself. So previously we've got this IPFS NPM tool uh, that basically spins up a, an HTTP server 
and sits in front of NPM and just proxies everything to it. And then it goes to the HTTP server, which it then turns into IPFS commands and goes off and gets stuff from IPFS. Um, but like adding it to NPM directly so that you could just say, you know, NPM install dash dash IPFS or transport IPFS or something like that. Uh, and it would pull stuff straight from IPFS. Um, so yeah, that's probably going to be me for the next couple of days. Any questions? What did the package managers kick off? Is that that's a working group? Is that right? What did it involve? Um, yeah, it's a working group. So we have a bunch of uh, package managers that we've talked to in the past about IPFS, or that we've heard that they're using IPFS, and we just kind of went over what uh, what they've done and if they succeeded or where they failed. Who's involved with that? Uh, you can watch the video if you like. The meeting was recorded. So, uh, uh, yeah, me, Hector, um, David was on the call, uh, some others. Nice. Can you put a link somewhere? To yeah, sure. Cool. Sure. Okay. Uh, cool. Any other questions for Alex? All right. Let's move on. Uh, it's Matteo next. Hey, I'm back. I last week I was uh, on the other side of the planet. Ken couldn't really join. I was in India for for a client. So hey, I am I'm back on this. Uh, I'm back this week. So, um, however, uh, Ron is. Uh, um, on uh, on vacation because it's like it's a national holiday in the US. You probably know we have a bunch of people over here. So whatever. Alex is in transit. Is in transit and can't couldn't join. I think Alex not. So um, I am kind of here representing everybody. So a uh, bunch of updates. Like nothing. No activity for me last week, more or less. Um, I was on the other side. Um, then um, so that was it. Uh, uh, I have a bunch of analysis tasks to do to write down some considerations, and I will try to get those done this week. Um, and uh, uh, if there is, uh, if we can get the benchmark for the problem we mentioned, I can I see which, if I can get a look at that as well. Um, then uh, I will go to Alex activity uh, because I'm really empty. Alex Nall. So uh, it set up the rendezvous server for the browser so that can run on the uh so that runs in the benchmark infra and doesn't use the public one because we were getting very weird numbers then we have um then he did a meeting with ugo about the ci integration and i don't know exactly how that go because i didn't see any minutes popping up so i need to follow up on this one um and uh, uh, uh we got it also added some tests to the runner. There is currently an issue which is blocked on, which is like log lines. Where do you want log lines to go? Uh, it's not major, but it's kind of blocked on having some feedbacks. And then there is a bunch of issues that uh, Alex will do next week. Um, you can see this week, which you can see uh, listed here. They is basically like small task on the infra that we are on the benchmark infra that we were talking to. Um, so. Uh, we can open this one up actually because the, the, uh, do you know if I can click on this one? Okay, I just copied. Um, so here we go. So this one it's um, it's writing architecture to adding leap to peer tests. That this first task for Alex, which is kind of the idea. Then we have got um. Uh, oh, there's uh, make the runner self healing. So if there is a crash, we can actually like fix ourselves, which seems pretty good. Which we had a couple of issues where like botched runs blocked, uh, crashed the server and need to be restarted manually, and gzip stuff before uploading, and some other small things in there. Let me open them up. I can't really. I don't know why. Do you know if it's clickable? Oh, maybe here is clickable. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, in the preview, you should be able to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Eye yeah. icon in the top right. Uh, lost in copy and pasting the stuff. 
Um, so yeah, include the full ladder. There are a bunch of activities being done. They are listed there. You can open them up, and um, they should be pretty straightforward to to do. Then uh, uh, we have um, the task from Run, and uh, uh, he did a bunch of present. He did a brief presentation on adding tests to the runner, and um, like a bunch of issues related to. Um, testing and fixing bugs and stuff like that. Um, and then uh, uh, browser tests. And it added a test for the trickle strategy. So we now have running, I think we're running also the trickle strategy tests in our tool. I don't know if they show up already on the UI, but they should. And uh, those are being added, so they should be able to get results on those as well. Um, and uh, uh, next week is this week is going to work on the MFS tests and the JS Go peer tests. So that's why, even that is actually what we are going to work on, we might as well do some some uh, synchronize on this one. So um, yeah, that's all. Uh, do we have any questions? Do you have any questions? I'll get in touch with uh, with Ron maybe later in the week if I get a chance to actually write some benchmark tests. Maybe I should focus on uh, this the cat from JS to Go test. If, uh, oh, if you can, if you want to focus on that, just focus on that one. That's fine. Just said uh, touch base with them is off today because of you know the yep. national, national holiday, but okay. it's good tomorrow usual times. So is in I think it's central. Nice, cool. Okay. Um, all right, uh, any, any other questions? Okay. Uh, all right, so next up we have uh, da, 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 a new challenger enters the arena. We've got Lytle. Hey, how, how are you doing? Would you uh, like to give us your update? Uh, just like a quick update related to JS IPFS. Uh, there's like a plan to bring uh, IPFS to Brave in 2018. This will be the year, uh, and we got. What's interesting about uh, this plan is that so far we've been thinking about shipping, like bundling Go IPFS binary with uh, Brave itself in a similar fashion they did. Uh, we, they are doing in beta uh, for Tor daemon, but that was mo mostly because uh, like Go IPFS was the only viable option a year ago when this discussion started. And now we have like IPNS support, uh, the HD lands in JS IPFS. And basically, there's like a way of using JS IPFS in Brave with some additional APIs. Um, I talked with uh, Brian from uh, Brave, and uh, we can, like IPFS compiler can be marked as a bless extension. And if JS code is running in that context. We have access to additional APIs, namely like row TCP sockets, uh, ability to start a TCP server, U UDP transport. And there are already uh, libraries that are compatible with Node uh, that are used by WebTorrent exactly for the same purpose in, uh, in Brave. So the WebTorrent is already blessed. Uh, so there's a uh, list extension, so there's like a prior art and some nice uh, libraries. Um, so that, I think that's uh, quite interesting because uh, it opens a window like for JS IPFS to be even more re relevant if we, uh, like if someone installs IPFS companion in uh, Brave and JS IPFS has access to those APIs, we could do very interesting things. For example, we could expose HTTP API from JS IPFS node running in the web browser node, or we could do maybe local discovery or uh, use regular TCP transport, things like that. So it's just uh, something I wanted to uh, put on the board. <laughs> and then like this week, I'll try uh, to at least like build a brave locally and uh, uh, th there's like this filter for accessing more powerful APIs. I, I just want to make a local build that has those APIs enabled by default so I can like prototype against that. Yeah. Nice. Are you saying that 
um, we could basically do a browser build of existing libp2p transports with uh, like net uh, D dgram or um, tcp whenever that's required in node we swap it out for those those chrome modules that you you've yeah to? yeah so like uh, web, uh there are like libraries using those low level chrome apis uh, created to look exactly like the node dgram and net modules um, so we wouldn't have to do any work to other than configuring the build to to our existing libp to be transports and we'd be able to get low level tcp mdns sort of things but in the web browser in web extensions yeah so all. that's like uh, that would be like uh, the perfect scenario right yeah <laughs> to detect that you are running in brave and then just during the build replace the module uh yeah Cool. Um, and so linking to that issue, what are you, are you looking for opinions on the two options or do you just, do you want feedback or? Yeah. So like basically it would be nice to just to proofread the plan. Uh, like the brave plan is fairly high level. Uh, the separate issue is uh, basically adding support to JS APFS for itself to recognize it's running in brave as a blessed extension and automatically like enable all those additional APIs. Um, I hope we don't need to write as much, like um, a lot of custom codes, like we had to, like totally different APIs without any polyfills in the libd web. In this case, maybe we can, maybe we'll be lucky and uh, we'll get it for free, we'll see. But still, uh, even if uh, drop-in library does not work, uh, like create, creating a dedicated transport, uh, are, it, that's like a plan B, right? Okay, uh, and uh, okay, uh, any other questions for, for Lido before we move on? Cool, okay, we are almost out of time. Uh, Christian was on the call, but he seems to have dropped off. So uh, I, let's. So Christian is working on uh, the Shana tests and getting them running on or getting Go IPFS to use this uh, repo with all of the Shana tests on it, rather than having their own. But that would enable JS IPFS to use all of them as well, which would be which would be great. Um, there are a couple of copied Shana tests in the JS IPFS repo at the moment, so it'd be nice if we could use all of the existing ones that. That are already there. Um, cool. Okay, so I will leave that um, there. Is there any other um, questions or um, or comments from IPFS Zoom Hash One or Michael Rogers or anyone else for that matter? No questions or comments on my end. <laughs> oh right, it's Porsche. Sure. Cool. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, uh, in which case, I think we are pretty much done. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And I'll see you next week for another exciting round of what you did last week, what you blocked on, and what you're going to do this week. Thank you. Bye, all. Bye. Bye.